Now let me know if it's just me, but don't you love when things just come together so smoothly for the Baltimore Ravens, when everything just falls in line perfectly for the team? Well, I do, and we're going to talk about exactly what's going on right now. Team, keep it clean. Before we do, make sure you click the thumbs up button. Leave a like on the video. Y'all went crazy with the like button yesterday. Let's go even crazy today. And also, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss a single video and turn the notifications all the way on. I love y'all so much. I appreciate y'all. Let's get into it. So a couple of hours ago, it was announced that the Tennessee Titans, they were signing former Seattle Seahawk, former New York Jet, safety Jamal Adams. But what's that got to do with Baltimore? What's the significance of that for the Ravens? Well, I'm going to tell you. Obviously, the Baltimore Ravens were quietly in the market for a third safety to not be behind, but to accompany, to be alongside with Kyle Hamilton, and Marcus Williams. We saw last year they ran a lot of three safety sets. And while this year it is going to be a new defense because it's under new defensive coordinator Zachary Orr, we got to feel like he's not going to try to fix something that's not broken with the way that they ran their defense last year. But it's still to be determined. But the Baltimore Ravens, they brought in Jamal Adams for a visit back in May. Now, I know when they brought in Jamal Adams, a lot of us were like, uh, okay, I mean... It couldn't hurt, but we would much rather them have gone in another direction. Maybe like uh, Justin Simmons, even a Micah High, but Justin Simmons, at least for me, he was my number one choice for the Baltimore Ravens. And again, way back then, I thought it was just a pipe dream. I thought it was just me being greedy, wanting the best of the best. But this thing, every day that passed, it's become more and more of a reality. It's become more and more of a possibility. So when the Tennessee Titans signed Jamal Adams today... That helps the Baltimore Ravens out in a big way because it can clarify things. A couple of things that it clarifies. One, it clarifies the amount of safeties that are left on the market for the Baltimore Ravens to sign if they are going to sign a third safety. Number two, which is even more important, it clarifies exactly what the market is right here, right now when it comes to the safety position. Now, the time right now is 2.10 PM. So the details of Jamal Adams deal have not come out yet. We don't know what the numbers are, but when those numbers come out, that can help the Ravens be like, look, Justin Simmons, unless they sign Jamal Adams to some crazy deal, which I highly, highly doubt they're going to. But that can help things out with the Baltimore Ravens if, if, and only if, they are truly interested in a Justin Simmons. It, it just makes so much sense. We've been clamoring for Justin Simmons to come to the Baltimore Ravens for months. And it, coincidentally, like a day or two ago, the Baltimore Ravens, Clifton Brown, he put out that article that mentioned both Jamal Adams and Justin Simmons possibly coming to the Baltimore Ravens. Something else that it also mentioned, too, was Ardarius Washington. And the Ravens have consistently been propping our Darius Washington up, letting us know how good or great he's been doing in minicamp and OTAs and stuff. And that's a beautiful thing. And I think that our Darius Washington, he could play some football. He certainly can. Now, he has dealt with some injuries here and there. But when he has played, he has been really good. But I do not envision. This is just my personal opinion. I do not envision the Baltimore Ravens wanting to go with our Darius Washington as that third safety reason being because of the lack of experience and i mean how can you get better at something if you don't get the experience well that's true but with the baltimore ravens being in win now mode right here right now i think that they would much rather an experienced veteran at that position rather than somebody who's only been in the league for a couple of years and hasn't gotten too much too much playing time again our Darius Washington can play he could play safety he could play cornerback he, he could do a couple different things but I think they're going to want to go with somebody more experienced but this the the, the the Titans signing Jamal Adams it really just clears it up for Baltimore Ravens to go ahead and allow Justin Simmons to come home that's that that we talked about a couple days ago with Justin Simmons being the leader and getting interceptions against Patrick Mahomes, it's no coincidence, especially when the next best person only has two against Patty. So with Justin Simmons having five, him being significantly farther away, and it's not just about Patrick Mahomes. 
even though he is the biggest opponent for the Baltimore Ravens, if he can dissect and analyze Patrick Mahomes like that, imagine what he could help do to all these other quarterbacks around the league. Imagine all the knowledge that he could bring to the Baltimore Ravens secondary because we're going against a lot of great quarterbacks this season too. So just imagine what a secondary that, that already looks good as is, Imagine what they could be with him. But since the Titans helped us out, we got to thank them. So in the comment section, if you're still here at this point of the video, just put hashtag thank you Titans. Now, before we continue, I got to give a special shout out to our newest Team Keep It Clean patron, our guy Christian. Appreciate you, Christian. Thank you very, very much. If any of y'all would like to also become one, you can go to patreon.com slash engravenvids. If not... Just make sure you subscribe to the channel. You got your notifications turned on and you're leaving a like on a video. But special shout out to Christian. We all appreciate you for rocking with Team Keep It Clean. Now, this next question came from a Team Keep It Clean patron, my guy, Martin. He said, hey, I appreciate the shout out. Sorry, I'm just now getting back to you. I couldn't find the video at first and I appreciate you as well giving a platform for my thoughts. Not going to lie, it was wholesome to see the Danny Woodhead video pop up in my notifications. Uh, shout out to YouTube for trolling. He said, because it's amazing to see your hard work and dedication you put in and the patience you had to go from six years ago, getting six views to now getting 7,000 views. <laughs> Congratulations on your success. <laughs> Look, man, um, we are not the best, greatest YouTuber at all. We're not even the best, greatest Ravens YouTuber at all. There's a lot that do a far better job than we do. And we just try to look for little ways here and there to try to improve the videos as best we can. Um, but anytime anybody ever asks me, oh, what should I do for YouTube? Or how should I approach this? I always tell them the same thing, consistency and patience. Even now, like we, and this, just to be super transparent with y'all, and I mean, y'all can see it for yourself. Like there are a lot of times when I get frustrated, I get frustrated. I'm like, man, why are the videos just not doing good? What What is going on? Are people not being notified about it? That's why I always tell you, hey, turn the notifications on because YouTube did some weird thing where they turn notifications on. We got to go into more depth about that soon. That's why I always tell you, turn notifications on and leave a like on the video because when you leave a like on the video, that will continue to recommend that channel to you, whether you subscribed or not. Hopefully you are subscribed here, but that'll continue to recommend that channel to you when you leave a like on the video. But um, it, sometimes it'll be weird because I, I, I put out a video and whatnot and the videos like they, they take some work like some people think it's super super easy but they do take a lot of work a lot of effort they take research they take a lot of different stuff but um you put out the video and it doesn't do so well and i'll be like man like what what's happening what what is going on um and i just, it could be for a number of different things but i'll be like it, it'll be frustrating for me because again this is my job this this is my work but again this is fun work and i enjoyed it and i appreciate the opportunity for sure because it came from y'all it happens from y'all uh with y'all support but um, it, it could be frustrating It'd be like, man, what, what is going on? So that's why I say with, with patience, I get I get reminders that you got to be patient with this whole thing. Um, some people, their YouTube channels, they could blow up overnight. They overnight success. And that's great for them. Other people, this is a slow grind, a very, very slow grind, slow process. Hey, that's me right there. But um, that's it's very important to be patient. Because patience is not just in the beginning when you're trying to grow. Patience is as you grow. Patience is if you've grown a significant amount of too. You always got to be patient because, and it's even a lot of times when opportunities will come and go. Um, opportunities will happen. Like even yesterday, I, I thought there was going to be a, a nice opportunity to do something really cool that was going to happen. It was all lined up for me and everything. And then I found out like last second, oh, well, it's not happening anymore. And I'm like, oh, I, I, I was frustrated. I was real frustrated. I was frustrated about it. But um, I'm like, hey, we just got to keep it moving. And hopefully whatever the next opportunity is, hopefully that will actually happen. Uh, it'll go down. But um, that's and that's just life in general. But with YouTube specifically, again, patience is a big thing. But anyway, continuing. He said, I'm praying for further success and hoping to see that 100K mark anyway. My question for today is why didn't Trevor Lawrence go through the same thing Lamar did when it comes to contracts? Ooh, that's such a great question. Because with Lamar, you, oof, wow. That's such a great, let me just continue. He said, uh, Lamar pretty much had his name dragged through the mud and people saying he didn't deserve the money. He's a terrible playoff performer, which to be fair, I can understand that while I don't think he's terrible, I think more so he gets in his own, his own nerves get to him. I mean, uh, as well as his own mind on whether he should throw or pass. Yeah, I always say Lamar Jackson, he just got to play winning football straight up. Because if you play winning football, then no matter what your stat line is, no matter what that is, as long as you're winning, that's all that matters. 
Say, for instance, you, you play winning football, your stat line ain't the prettiest, but you get to and win the Super Bowl, even without a pretty stat line, hey, you're Super Bowl champion. Nobody can take that away from you. Whether you got there through the majority of throwing, you got there, majority running, you got there from just balling, you won, and that's all that counts. Anyway, continuing. He said, uh, if you compare Lamar to Trevor Lawrence's first three years, uh, Lamar's are far better than Trevor Lawrence's. So why doesn't he get the same treatment as Lamar? I'm pretty much speaking about Nick Wright when I'm saying this, all because he's strangely quiet when it comes to Trevor Lawrence's stats, but brings up the Jaguars record, even though uh, he's not a QB wins type of guy. He says the Jags had to pay Trevor. Uh, why? What he? What has he done that's earned him a paycheck as opposed to Lamar that had to fight for every dollar? Look, Trevor just got handed his before his fifth year option and doesn't have to go through the franchise tag waiting game. Oof, man. I have a whole lot more to say, but I know this is a five minute read already. I just ended by saying I hope people don't blame racism on this, but I can completely understand if they do because that is really the only logical explanation as to why Trevor got his contract a year early, whereas Lamar had to wait till the start of his sixth season to get. He is wow. This is a powerful email, and that is such a great question. I haven't really thought of that before because, yeah, with Lamar Jackson, this negotiations and all that were going on for years, and I don't think it has anything to do with the whole agent thing. Why Lamar didn't get his, and um, Trevor got his like right away. Maybe Trevor was like, "Oh, Jaguar, they 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 trying to pay me all this money." Oh. And he told his agent, Look, take it, take it right away. Like, no negotiations needed. Take it right away. Just say yes. I'll sign. I'm good. And he was like, but before they change their mind on it. But with, with Lamar, like, yeah, there was all these topics. So how he doesn't deserve the money. He doesn't deserve it. He hasn't earned it. The Ravens should play him on a franchise. To, and it, it got ugly. It got nasty for Lamar Jackson. Nasty. Trevor Lawrence ain't got no MVP. Trevor Lawrence ain't never get his team to no number one seed. Trevor Lawrence just ain't a winner like Lamar Jackson has been. But there was no issues with giving him his bread. There was no pushback. There were no, I ain't no conversations about, oh, Trevor Lawrence don't deserve that. It's the weirdest thing ever.